Tenda Indora and today I want to talk to you about foundations. It's the key to any structure. Now anyone who's ever building anything, you know the importance that getting the foundation right is a pivotal thing because if the foundation is not right, the building will not stand. Um, the book of Luke 6 verse 48 says that it is like a person building a house who digs deep and um, looks to the foundation and lodges the foundation on solid ground. When the flood waters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it is well built. Now the beautiful thing about us is that Christ is our rock. He is our foundation. So, you know, when you believe in him um, and actually meditate on this word, you know that regardless of what storms that come in your life, you will be able to stand. Now the amazing thing is that um, this earth is almost like, um, you know, when we say, Lord, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there's a heavenly program that God has for our lives. And we want it mirrored down on this earth where there's provision, where there's, you know, divine intervention, where there are things that come in to help us and rec rescue us when we need it. And the Lord has actually given these wisdom and these ideas to people like you and me who've actually set things in motion, set things in place, so that when storms of life actually do take place, you're not going to be in trouble. And interestingly, this word of insurance was actually set up by a Christian group um, years and years ago where, you know, they looked at the fact that everybody is going to be dead at some point you know we're all going to die death and taxes are the most certain things that will take place but the implications of anybody's dying is that you know the family struggles because not only have they lost a loved one but financially that person had a role to play um, within the, the 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 family setting um and i get so disturbed so many times when um i come across people saying oh you know, I will not die, but I will live to proclaim the works of the Lord. That's fantastic, and that is true, because as you're living, you're going to be testifying and glorifying God and sharing the gospel. But there will be a time on this earth where you will depart and move to that higher heavenly realm, where you will move to the glory. And as you do that, you have family who you've left behind. A burial within itself costs about £5,000. And I remember a few years ago having somebody walking into the bank, taking out a personal loan to send their father all the way back to Africa because they'd passed away. Their credit wasn't great at that time, and the APR they got for that loan was ridiculous. Now you picture four or five years down the line having to make a payment of 400 and odd pounds for the death of a loved one it's not very nice. It's not the sort of memories or things that you would want to leave your children, your grandchildren, you know, just to have laid you down in the ground. I hear people say, oh, just throw me in a sack or just throw me in the ground when I'm gone. And sentiments would have it that no one would ever do that because the minute some we lose a loved one, even the most frustrating things about them, <laughs> if you were not close, you, you, it tugs at your heart and you want to give them a great send off. You want to, you know, send them off in a, in a great way. Um, and one of the things that we have here on earth is protection. There's a parable um, of the shrewd manager <laughs> where uh, his master commends him. Um, he was not doing business the right way. Um, and at some point the manager says right I'm giving you the sack and he realized this and actually started to call people in to say oh you owe 500 pounds let's make it 300 you owe 200 pounds let's make it 150 and in so doing he was gaining favor with those people who were out there because he knew that as he stepped out into the world he was gonna be on his own so by him doing that in essence it was almost like an insurance policy to say by the time I get out into the world I'm not going to be in this influential position that I was before and in that scripture Christ says that you know the children of the world are wiser than the children of the light and it requires wisdom to start to look at what things can go wrong in life not dwelling on them, not meditating on them, but it happens to ordinary people like you and me. Um, a few weeks ago, someone really close died suddenly. You know, someone yesterday rang me and they just lost their mom. And it's those things that just hearken and bring it home to say, actually, our time here on earth is very limited. But when we go, we have others that 
we're responsible for, we have things that we've committed ourselves to, and it's not you know, great to leave that burden with those that are following on. So in terms of the types of protection that they are, so I've mentioned life insurance, so you know, what life insurance is, or life insurance some call it, it covers you when you're dead. It's just making sure that your loved ones receive a lump sum of money that will take care of them um, if you're no longer there. If you're an individual who has some goals, i.e. I want my daughter to go to the best schools that money can buy, you know, if I can afford it, that's what I'm working for, and I wouldn't want her to be shortchanged if I didn't make it all the way through that journey with her. I would still want her to be able to go to that school. She's into drama, she's into acting, you know, she, she, I want her to still be able to afford that. Whoever's looking after her when I'm no longer around, I don't want to put them under the pressure or to cut short her plans and her dreams because I didn't leave any provision there. It says uh, a, a wise man leaves an inheritance for their children. It's important that you leave something not only spiritually as a legacy for your loved ones, but something tangible that they could actually move to go on to the next level. The next thing is critical illnesses. Now, critical illness cover, what that does is it pays out a lump sum of money upon a diagnosis of a critical illness. Now, we're living in times where we're so busy. A lot of these critical illnesses are lifestyle illnesses. So, somebody who's seriously taking after their health, eating well, you know, exercising, you know, those are all great things that we need to be doing um, to try and minimize our risks of falling into this category. But that's not to say that it won't happen anyway. You know, I know some of the fittest, most agile people who never touched butter or did anything, um, you know, that was untoward, get diagnosed with, you know, breast cancer, all sorts of things, have a stroke. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, if it happens to you, it's not because you've done anything particularly wrong, but I would call it maybe luck of the draw. Who was it going to happen to? Um, and it happens at the time when you're not expecting it. I always people hear people say, oh, oh, Tendai, you know what? I'm, I'm fit. I never go to the doctor. And I say, yeah, you're actually a little bit more dangerous because you never go to the doctor, so you never have any checkups, so you have no idea whether anything is not right within your body. Go to the doctor, go once a year. If you're fit as a fit, go and have a checkup because actually by not doing so, things are probably lingering in the background and when they hit, they'll hit suddenly. But if you have this type of insurance, um, it preserves you or it gives you an opportunity to have that peace of mind of being able to have the treatment that you require without the burden or the financial strain of, oh my gosh, how will I clear the mortgage off? Because believe me you, when we go into the hospitals and we visit our loved ones and we take them bananas and apples, their bills still slipping through the door, the mortgage person's writing in, the council tax wants their money, you know, any debts that they have are still being requested. And there's nothing worse than leaving a hospital bed and going home and facing that stress of a financial burden. So that's what something like a critical illness policy can do. It gives you some money that you're able to make any adjustments to your lifestyle. Some critical illnesses leave you disabled. They need you to have a stair lift, um, depending on what it is. But that's what um, that does. Um, the other thing is income protection. Interestingly enough, this is the thing that most people actually don't look at. Everybody understands that they're not going to be around forever. And so most people, you know, have some sort of life insurance in a, in a, in a way. But the odds of you actually dying before retirement age are significantly less than of you being off work for more than two months. And the question is, how would you survive if you were not able to work for a two month period? What would that look like in your household? Most people here in the UK are actually on statutory sick pay, which doesn't really go far. 85, 45 a week, could you survive on that? Um, and the thing is, this slips into the gap and actually ensures that you're given a regular income. 
um, the amount of money that you can afford to place on it, the amount of um, time that you want the payment to come out from, your occupation, your weight, your height, your lifestyle, all factor into how these insurances are calculated. But when you have some sort of structure and you mitigate the risks because no one knows what's going to happen um, and it's one of these things about insurances is you don't get your money back so it's not something that you want to put your whole pay on because there's no return on this investment but you need to have sufficient cover in place to give you that peace of mind of knowing that if something does go wrong that's out of my control because in terms of health it really is not per se, all in your control. There are things that we can do, as I've mentioned earlier, to, to, to try and mitigate or you know minimize the risks, but it happens to the best people in the world. And that's something that everybody needs to consider. People with families and young children even more so because most people, when they get into financial trouble, it's because one of these things have happened. Someone has died unexpectedly and left them with kids and it's hard, you used to survive on two paychecks, now you just have the one. Someone's fallen seriously ill, it came to a point where they were not getting paid at work. Or just, you know, that bridge where you're not being, earning as much money as you used to because you're off work sick. Um, so that's my talk about um, getting your financial foundations right because as you move along that financial planning journey, this is one of the storms that could hit your life, that could hit your household and derail from those bigger goals and plans that you've set in place. Anyone who wants to contact me, get in touch with me in the email or the telephone number that you'll see at the end of this. Thank you.